In the beginning, there was just the torch. And then, after a few updates, we got glowstone blocks. And it's been a while since those very early light sources. Now we have many, many, many light sources, fire, uh, lanterns, even end rods. Bet you forgot about those. All of those suck compared to this, the copper bulb. The newest snapshot to Minecraft just released and there's a lot in there, but the thing I'm most excited about is the copper bulb. Holy moly, I couldn't be more excited about this block. It is a light source and it has one of the most unique features of a light source that you can turn on and off. One of the most unique features. There's only one other light source that you can actually turn on and off. That is the redstone lamp. Technically, could you turn off a fire? Maybe. I guess maybe you could turn off a fire and then relight it. Maybe, I guess. But no, that's not what I'm talking about. Anyway, copper uh, bulb is here. Here is how you craft it. You use three copper blocks. You use a blaze rod in the center, and then you use a redstone dust in uh, at the very bottom. So let's go ahead and break this. What? What happened to my? Okay. Well, we'll just grab the extras. I swear I put those things inside of there. Uh, but this is the recipe for bam the copper bulb. But what's cool is you get four of them as your output. So let's put them in the world here, and you can see that they are by default turned off. Also, these are just like all the other copper items that they will age slowly over time. Five years later. I've been here for five years waiting for these to age. No, I'm just I'm kidding. I just, I just put them down. But here are the different versions of the copper bulb. It's kind of crazy that you get one block, but because it's made out of copper, you get four different looks to it. I made a little tunnel so that you can't see light as much. And I'm putting down the most oxidized copper bulb. And that is because it puts out very little light when it is fully oxidized. But if you scrape off the oxidation with an ax, it will actually get brighter. So we went from fully oxidized to weathered with that. There we go, we went from weathered to exposed. Stop exposing yourself, copper ball. And then we're gonna go to full bright. That is just the default copper bulb. So you can see the light difference is quite substantial between the lowest level of light and then like even like medium level of light. Like lowest level of light is like no light at all. Like very, very little. Here is that second stage and here's the third stage and then here is the last stage that's like that's as bright as anything else uh, right there of course just like with any of the other copper blocks you can wax a copper bulb and then it will stay at its oxidation level it will not change it will not age here is the next most exciting thing about the copper bulb that is that it is activated by a pulse not a constant signal that is like the smallest detail but it is such a big detail so right here we have a copper bulb just sitting in the middle of this room and i can click it and it will turn off you'll also notice that there's a red dot right in the center as that's happening that's kind of to indicate that it is constantly powered by redstone but it doesn't need to be powered by redstone all the time. Unlike the redstone lamp here, uh, so if I put down a redstone lamp, in fact, I can kind of put it just right here and that button will activate the redstone lamp as well. You can see that when the button's power is gone, I'm gonna remove that, when the button's power does not exist anymore, then the redstone lamp turns off, which is a completely different behavior from the copper bulb, where when the redstone signal turns off, the copper bulb stays on. And that is because all it's doing is toggling between being turned on and being turned off instead of only on while it has redstone. You may have noticed, but this one up here in the sky, first off, it's oxidized. But also, it's making a sound. It's making like a weird clicky sound. Turning all my volumes all the way up just to hear those sweet 
sweet clickety clicks. Um, okay, so over in this room over, where am I? I'm lost. Over here, we have a whole bunch of them clicking at the same time. So you can kind of tell that the sound that it does. I was just trying to kind of go for like a marquee look, like if you were like at a movie theater and you know how the lights blink on and off, uh, backwards and forwards. That's what I was going for here. But what is crazy is how simple the redstone is to pull off this effect. Because all we're doing is pulsing between one and the next. That means, whoops, uh, that means that all I have to do is have one pulse go through as, a, as if this is glass, uh, the glass doesn't transfer the redstone, that's why it's not moving anymore. But all we're doing is just pulsing just one little redstone and it can switch these from one state to another, which means that they will just toggle from one, from on to off. And so I made sure when I put them down that every other one was turned on. And now that redstone at the top it's just going through and it will flip the state, which will turn, you know, it looks like the opposite is turning on or off. This would be so complicated if this was a redstone lamp. Not complicated at all with the copper bulb. Now, this has some insane potential, okay? Let me just tell you how insane this is for redstone circuitry. And here is why because this copper bulb can toggle other things with a comparator. If you take a comparator and take the output of this copper bulb, it now will work just like a toggle. This hasn't existed in Minecraft easily. It hasn't existed in Minecraft. It's called a T flip flop. Uh, this has been in redstone circuitry for a very, very long time. But this allows you to, to basically use a button as a lever. I was curious if the oxidation level changes the redstone output and it doesn't look like it does. It's just full redstone comparator uh, as it's coming out of there. Remember, development belt, so who knows? This might change in the future. For example, if we have this type of situation of a secret Minecraft door with a long, not so secret uh, lever on the top, we can make this Jeb door work. So here's the redstone back there. Very, very simple. This is a classic door in Minecraft, but you need the switch there. Without this lever there, the door will constantly be unpowered. And if you use just a button, stick a button on there and hit it, yeah, sure, that'll work, but it's not gonna stay open. So what most people do is they will invert the signal coming out of the button. So instead of this redstone here, we're gonna put down uh, that torch right there. Now from this side, it will stay closed but the button has a very limited time that you can actually make it through that doorway. And that's not what we want. We want a button that doesn't just last a second. We want a button that lasts forever, just like a lever does. Now, instead of any of that, I have added the copper bulb in its place with a comparator checking its output. And all that goes back into our simple redstone that we had before replace the lever with a button, and now it actually works exactly how we want it to, where with one press of a button, we're either toggling the door on or we're toggling the door off, which is incredible. The fact that these states can be changed with just a pulse and then that you can take that and find out what the state is with a comparator. Game changer. Honestly, such a big, big change to Minecraft. And I think it's gonna get used all over the place in Redstone. That's not the only thing that was uh, released with this snapshot. We have a whole bunch of new copper blocks and a whole bunch of new tough blocks. So let's go through the copper options. Obviously, every single copper version has the four different variations of being just itself, weathered, aged, oxidized, that sort of stuff. So I'm not really gonna cover all that, you can see that. Uh, but we have a new copper trap door. This can be activated by the player, unlike the iron trap door, right? Iron, you have to use redstone to activate it, but all the other trap doors, you can just open with your hand, uh, and so that one you can just open with your hand. Uh, we already talked a lot about the copper bulb, but I just wanted to point out that it's off state, which is what, you know, this is on, this is off. The off state of this, it looks really, really cool. And I could really see it being used 
along with some of the other copper uh, that is inside of the game already. Next, we have a brand new block, and this is the chiseled version of copper. We also have the copper grate, which looks awesome, and honestly, it sounds awesome. Like, I don't know why, but I love how it sounds when it's being placed down and as you're walking along the top of it. I absolutely love the sounds that it makes. And then finally, you have the copper door, and I was worried, or I kind of wondered, is this lockable? Because this thing kind of looks like a lock, but it's just a normal old door. Um, it's interesting that it, I mean, obviously it makes me think of the iron door because there's the iron door in the game and the iron door is just like the iron trap door where you can't open this. I'm clicking as hard as I can. You can't do that with your hand like you can all the other doors. Is there gonna be a, maybe a third thing? This is a total, I'm just totally making this up, but it would be so cool if maybe there was another sort of situation to a metal door, uh, just a, just a day daydream. So what are the crafting recipes for all of these? Let's start off with the copper grate. Uh, this is the recipe. You put four copper blocks in the corners, right? When I first read this on the blog post, I was like, this? Uh, no, that just makes the cut copper. No, that's not how we do it. We put it in, uh, the, uh, in the middle on each side, and that is how you get the grate. How do you get the new chiseled copper? Well, you have to make cut copper slabs, and then those all go together to get the chiseled copper block as the output. The copper trap door is made like all the other traps doors where you replace the wood with uh, copper blocks and that is how you get that trap door the door it's a typical door uh, recipe and you also have the copper bulb which we already talked about what is super duper interesting is that the stone cutter will work with all of these recipes so if you want to uh, use the stone cutter instead you can use it copper is not a stone I think it's a metal pretty sure that I learned that copper is a metal, not stone, but it still works in the stone cutter. Couldn't be happier. There is also new tough variants. So here's the tough block that we've had for uh, a while now. I think ever since amethyst geodes uh, were introduced. And uh, we have the stairs and the slab. We also have a new uh, a wall, which is fantastic. I love these walls, honestly. Good texture. I like that it is kind of similar to cobblestone, but not quite. You also have a new polished tough block, which includes the stairs, the slabs, and the wall as well. Sometimes this wall is a little hard to see when uh, it's not long enough because those sections do make different sort of patterns there. So that looks really, really cool. I like that wall a lot. And then you also have the brick version. So you went from tough to polished to brick. So you have the brick blocks, which are the stairs, the slabs, and the block. And then you also have a new version of wall. So interesting that they have, this looks so similar to the normal brick. I forgot that Deep Slate has a brick as well. So we have this, which is uh, the new brick. We have the old brick. Oh my gosh, that looks absolutely horrible. So this is the old stone brick that we've had for forever. And now we also still have this Deep Slate brick. So you have three options where each texture is really similar to the last, uh, but in different colors. I like it, I gotta say, I like it. That is so interesting. This texture is so, oh, it's like flipped. Oh, it is flipped, actually. You have the, the. I, I was noticing this, is it goes like blank, cut across, blank, cut across. It goes cut across, blank, cut across, blank. And then the old Deep Slate ones are the way that the original stone bricks are. Interesting stuff. That's not all, because we do have two chiseled versions of Tough as well. So we have this, which I saw in uh, the trial chambers and the trial spawners. And then we also have this one, which I honestly did not see until like right now. Like where the heck has this block been my entire life? Was this in Minecraft Live? Because I totally missed it. If it was, that is my bad. 
Uh, it has this really cool, like almost like wind spirally texture on it. And same thing on the top, same type of uh, spiral texture. It looks really, really good. And you can kind of see it next to this brick here. It is a different shade, a different sort of color, but it does match. I feel like that looks really, really good. Okay, how do you craft all of this? Well, to make things easy, you can use the stone cutter and get every single type of this block. But if you are uh, not a stone cutter aficionado, you can still craft them in the normal crafting uh, way. Uh, tough turns into polished tough with a uh, typical sort of brick situation. Then the polished tough turns into brick in the typical brick situation. So we got that. <laughs> Then we're able to make the slabs by just, you know, the typical recipe. Those slabs are used in the chiseled version. So you have the chiseled tough brick, which uses the brick slabs, chiseled tough bricks. And then you have the normal uh, chiseled tough, and that just uses tough slabs. So I didn't show how to make that, but pretty sure you can figure out how to make tough slabs in order to make chiseled tough. The new blocks are absolutely awesome. I've been kind of using them and uh, putting them around this build here. So you got a few uh, different of the chiseled copper. You have the grates, which I think look absolutely cool. It's interesting. They work like glass where if you were to have multiple, you don't, you don't see the edges of the other in there so it looks like just one straight wall let's just replace these there we go looking hot and coppery that is awesome i wonder if i can grab the nbt and not grab the nbt but i was wondering if i switch that out what is so cool to me is you can put down a button activate it and then destroy the button you don't need that button there anymore you can just uh, th there it's gone so that is what the copper looks like with the copper trap door on it. I didn't notice that the bulb has a cross that's like perfect. And then the uh, trap door has a cross that is diagonal. Interesting. It makes a really cool pattern. And turn that on and get rid of it. I love that. I love that. Why do I love that so much? Because what you can do is you could just have like maybe street lamps and you can put them up at the top stick down your copper bulb and it doesn't need a redstone a redstone source anymore you just click it you remove that and now it is lit i think that is so neat i need more copper on my copper there we go amazing actually what would it look like if i did more of a weathered copper on the inside looking good i need to activate that somehow and boop boop there we go now you get like a two-tone of the copper on the outside with the copper on the inside <sighs> looks cool but it's dim mm. i think this is a fantastic snapshot and i really really like the new changes thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you learned something new and fresh about minecraft about the copper bulb about all the new tough blocks and there's even one more command that I may, I may, uh, it's the tick command. I don't know if I want to cover all of it in, in this episode, but it is pretty darn cool. You can set the tick to like really anything, which is just insane. Tick is, uh, you know, 20 ticks happen every second, but maybe I could say 30 ticks happen every second. And now the game seems to be running faster because I turned the tick rate up, but we could also have it go the opposite way. I'm gonna set it to one tick every second. And it's like, the game is like laggy because <laughs> I can't even move. Wait, what the heck? Why am I slowly moving from one area? I'm in, oh my gosh, I just hit F5 and it's taking, oh my God, look at the pixels. What is slow mo Minecraft? Woo! Let's move the lag. Okay, well, let's try for two. 22 ticks per second. Oh, uh, if I jump now, do a spin, do a 360 no scope. What happened to my head? Holy moly, it is weird. You can also even freeze. Boop. Okay, there we go. So time is frozen right now. And uh, I can show you if I go back up to the top here. Oh no, I'd froze the thing so I can't use my 
I can't actually, can I switch into game mode? Okay, I can, I can do that. So up here, you'll notice that the redstone is just completely frozen, which is honestly awesome. And so I can step up uh, for one tick. I can advance the game by just a single tick. So if I hit enter, oops, I, I didn't, I didn't actually do it. There we go, one tick. Oh my gosh, oh, I teleported. Oh, the next thing happened as I, because I, I did it. But you can see, that it will activate right here. And we can get a great idea of how redstone works by looking at this, right? So if I advance one tick, this is at a one tick delay, so it did nothing. Another tick, it will activate this redstone, which activates this immediately. This will happen on the next tick. Oh, I guess it takes two ticks? Oh, does it take two ticks to activate? There you go, well, there you go. Now it's activating. Now it's gonna take two more ticks, so I can say, step it up by two ticks and that will activate this. So we can really tell, this is a great debugging tool for redstone. If you're trying to get the timing of, okay, this piston is moving out of the way while this piston is doing that. Oh, this is like a whole new world of being able to debug your redstone because of these crazy ticks. And I can just move around like normal. If I'm ready to kind of get it back to normal, I can set that too. Unfreeze, unfreeze time. I think I'm still at the very low rate of like a few, two ticks a second. Let's go back to 20 and there we go. Our game runs like normal. Honestly, so impressive, mind blowing. Okay, this time I'm really wrapping up the video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it, learned something, and uh, that you use this in your Minecraft world. That is, that's what makes me happy. If you learned something new, let me know in the comments down below. That will make me also happy. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.